And this particular site is a Kelso site, and it's a typical wean to finish barn. It's a tunnel ventilated barn. Uh, much what we see, it's a 2200 head capacity barn. Uh, really the only difference between this and a, a real commercial barn would be there's a whole lot more feed bins so that we can uh, track the feed. And there's also um, some extra scales and things like that inside the barn. When we look inside the barn, we have uh, essentially two rooms uh, of uh, two different rooms where we do the trials and there's 36 pens in each room that we do the trial, trials in and there's some extra pens you just have to have as part of the research project. We use the feed logic system to feed the pigs in the barn. Um, just like in John's trial, we had the pigs commingled in the pen, so we weren't able to get feed efficiencies in this trial, but uh, that's what we use to measure the feed and understand feed efficiencies when we're doing pen trials. And how the feed logic works is that uh, we have the capability of uh, getting up to eight different feeds into the feed logic and then uh, moving those out and weighing the volume to the to the uh, pens every day on a daily basis. So uh, that does that on a mechanized way. We also have the capability to uh, do different water medications in the in the, and measure different water uh, consumptions through the barn. We have four different water lines, so we can do different treatments. We didn't do that in uh, this particular phase, but or in this particular trial. Uh, this is kind of a plumber's nightmare. But I, uh, and let me tell you, if you're going to water medicate a group of pigs, you better know how to do the valves. <laughs> but um, the reason I show this is we put some electronic water meters in here to be able to evaluate water consumption. And it's been a pretty uh, interesting thing to watch some of that consumption over time. And uh, some interesting data has come out of that. This is just looking at the pens. Uh, we put a little higher uh, pen divider so we didn't have any concerns with pigs jumping pens and losing research data based on that. And so that's one of the things. It doesn't make cr uh, walking pens very much fun, but it uh, does help out to ensure that the research is good. And on the typical arrival day, we have uh, extra people in to help make sure we get all the pigs weighed and allocated properly. Uh, then we do individual weights coming in, individual weights uh, at the split between the nursery and finish. These are wing to finish and then uh, at just prior to sale. And this is just showing uh, the pigs just after arrival and uh, uh, just getting started on, uh, started on feed in the trial. And as I said, we, we do those weights. Again, we do the um, individuals at those times. And then every two weeks, uh, we do whole pen weights uh, where we can bring the entire pen onto the scale and weigh the entire pen. So definitely have a lot of capability of getting a, a lot of good information out of there. Uh, for this trial, uh, all the pigs uh, were allocated uh, on arrival except for any animals that were injured or had hernias. And uh, <clears throat> pigs were assigned uh, to pens and it was based uh, randomly so all pens had all weights. Uh, there was no sorting for size um, amongst pens. So it's kind of different to look at a pen that has every uh, possible weight range of pig in it. Uh, the pens were double stocked, uh, so it is just like a typical commercial uh, wean finish barn, and then they're split uh, at, at the finishing stage, and th at that point in time they go down to uh, 7.15 square foot. All pigs were vaccinated in this trial with uh, full dose of ileitis, Erie ALC, and Salmonella SC54, and then we use an autogenous parasuous, strepsuous, and mycoplasma vaccination. And, um, and all pigs did receive, all, the, all treatments did receive those. We did have uh, five different treatments we did in this trial as far as circle vaccination, and this was our primary uh, area of concern. And, and for the scientists out there, I, I apologize already. We don't have any controls. Uh, but when the producers that we do the research work for came to us, they said, that's really not a question. We're going to vaccinate. So that's why there isn't any controls here. So uh, we don't have that difference. But uh, we had, uh, in this system, they've done some half dose at uh, processing, which would typically be four to six days of age, at weaning, uh, which would be around 18 to 19 days of age, and then four weeks post weaning. And then we did a full dose intervet at weaning and four weeks post weaning. We did a um, half dose intervet at weaning and a half dose at uh, four weeks post weaning. We did the BI uh, circleflex at weaning, and we did uh, half dose BI circuit flex at weaning and then 
at four weeks. So uh, the time frames are the same for all products given. And uh, when we allocated these pigs, we went back to the farrowing house and each, we started in a litter and we started, and so every litter had at least one cohort of pigs. And most of the litters had, because most of the litters were over 10, had two, cohort, two complete cohorts of pigs. So we wanted to take out the litter effect as a part of the trial, and so we did that back at the farrowing house. And uh, let me tell you, when you put it all the way back to the farrowing house, it adds another level of complexity to the trial. Some of the things we found diagnostically through the trial uh, is we had some flu on the pigs right right after they arrived at the uh, wean to finish site, one of the sow farms. Uh, it's kind of Murphy's Law of Trials. When you set up the trial and you have three farms going in, uh, one of them always has to have something right before you start the trial. And so we had a flu break uh, going in from one of the sow farms. And so we did have some influenza come at the very beginning of this trial as well. The uh, <clears throat> other diagnostics we had uh, on from postmortems, uh, we had some strep in the nursery phase. Uh, in the early finishing phase, we had some mycoplasma hyalurinus. We saw some stiff sore pigs having a little slow time moving around the pen. If you, if you looked at the pigs, you said they looked pretty good, but you could definitely see that stiffness if you looked closely. We identified parasuus, asuus, uh, strep, and staph. So uh, certainly uh, some agents we know that are out there in typical populations. And in late finish, we had some pastorella strep, PCD2, and mycoplasma. So pretty typical for what we'd see for finishing pigs. Uh, PERS, these were PERS negative. Uh, the sow farms were monitored and continue to, be, uh, continue to be negative today. And we tested these pigs uh, at three different phases through the finishing phase, through the nursery, early finishing, late finishing, and all times were negative. Uh, the mycoplasma, this was a mycoplasma positive flow, and so uh, the pigs did test positive to mycoplasma. And we put these uh, slides in just to uh, demonstrate some of the lesions. And for those of you who have posted some uh, PCV AD pigs, uh, certainly those lungs look familiar. We had some big ulcers at the end, uh, even though all the pigs were vaccinated. <clears throat> and this chart I put in uh, just to include, <clears throat> because I think it's kind of interesting, uh, this is one of the things we learned with the uh, water monitoring system. And what this is is just water consumption over time. And uh, there's two different rooms, so that's the two different charts you're looking at. And when you look at these dates, uh, we went through and did the four-week vaccination on two different dates, two days apart. And so you can see that dip down in uh, water consumption. So uh, definitely vaccinating pigs has an effect because uh, that was measuring water to all pigs during that time frame. So uh, when we looked at the performance across the different vaccination protocols, and we looked at the... Uh, Incoming weights, there was no difference in the incoming weights, and we set up the trial to be that way, so we expected that. Uh, at 66 days, we did see that the uh, pigs that got the single dose injection had the best weights and it was significantly different uh, to uh, the full dose, to the animals that got two full dose products uh, at weaning at nursery. So there, def there was a definite difference in weight at the mid time, but when we got out to the end of finishing, uh, right before market, <clears throat> before the first marketing, you can see that that difference uh, did go away and wasn't statistical at that point. There was a numeric difference, so it looks like it was trending that way, but it wasn't significant at the end. I threw in these box and whiskers charts. I'm not sure how well they show up, uh, but um, the idea was just to show some of the variation. And so this is the starting weights, and so you can see we tried to uh, keep those pretty well randomized across the trials. These are the midpoint weights. And I think the interesting thing here, as we look at these midpoint weights, uh, the single dose pigs had a little tighter box here and a little less variation in the whole data set. And so I think that's a comp or part of what's uh, making that difference show up as we get, uh, as we looked at the final data. The end weights, again, you can see uh, that the single dose pigs had a little advantage there. It wasn't statistical. Uh, but uh, And the box started to spread out a little bit, and so did the overall weight range uh, as we got to the end of finishing. We looked at the average daily gain. Uh, we can see here again, uh, this box is a little tighter, kind of fits with the data. And then as we got through the finishing gain, uh, the, the box has kind of widened out again. And when we combined it to a, a total wing to finish gain, 
uh, you can see that, uh, again, uh, we had uh, a trend here, but uh, not significantly different. <clears throat> so when we broke it down and looked at average daily gain, we had a better average daily gain on the single dose uh, pigs versus two full dose pigs, uh, and then the others were in between. Uh, all the other treatments were in between, so we, we know there was a difference in that daily gain through that nursery phase. And so the question is, was it the vaccine? Was it uh, just the simple fact that they got injected? And uh, you can see certainly uh, as we got out here, then the gain kind of uh, went back. Uh, again, this one's still being numerically the best, but uh, not statistically different. And the same thing on the wean to finish. When we looked at mortality, uh, this one was a little hard uh, for me. I, I know I have to trust the statistics and believe that, but when you look at the numbers as a practitioner, it looks quite a bit different. But uh, statistically, there was no difference in the numbers of, uh, in, the, in the mortalities here, even though there were some numeric differences. So uh, through, the, through the trial, we really didn't see in the various treatments any difference within uh, vaccination. One of the things that we did also uh, record here was the uh, number of different pigs uh, that were treated with any injectable. So we just kept track of the pigs, and uh, if a pig was treated, it's also recorded. And then we just added up those numbers at the end of the trial. And the uh, single shot, uh, the BI single shot was the lowest as far as uh, in the nursery phase and as well as in the uh, final finishing phase. Uh, so we did have less injections, less pigs that needed to be injected, and uh, the trend was also there on the animals that were uh, had to have a repeat injection. So we also went back and looked at the animals that were, not only the animals that were treated once, but the animals that had to be retreated. And so this one's looking at the animals that were retreated uh, a second time. So when we looked at the total number of injections, uh, again, this would be other treatments other than vaccine. Uh, the, the one dose was the lowest in the nursery phase and in the uh, final finishing phase. One of the things uh, that we thought going into the trial was going to be really interesting and, and really helpful in interpreting this data, we uh, bled the pigs at 3, 7, uh, 10, 13, 17, and 23 weeks, and we did quantitative PCRs of all the pigs, and boy, we thought this is going to give us a lot of really good information. At the end of the day, they were all pretty much the same. We really couldn't sort anything out as far as any differences when we looked at the, uh, at the data. We looked at it a number of different ways, trying to understand it, and uh, really didn't come up with any differences. And so, uh, in summary, uh, we have here uh, subclinical case, and, and I'm not sure this is a subclinical case. We put it down this way is because we've had the discussions. Uh, it may be a clinical case that just was controlled well with vaccine. And so we didn't find a lot of exposure to PCV2 when we looked at the quantitative PCR, but I'm not sure if it was subclinical or not. But anyway, at the end of the day, we didn't find a lot of viremia. And we didn't see any difference in mortality across the various vaccination uh, strategies. We did have the heaviest gain at the in the nursery phase on the uh, single dose Circoflex product, and we didn't see any differences at the end of the finishing phase. Some of the things we did see on the uh, with the BI product uh, versus the other vaccination uh, schemes was we had lower number of pigs treated, uh, less pigs retreated, and the overall total number of injections was the lowest using that uh, using that program. And uh, one of the things. Uh, that I'd like to do is uh, have a few acknowledgments here. Uh, first of all, uh, for Banger and Shearing Plow Intervet for helping to support this project and helping to support this study uh, so we could get a good understanding of how these uh, vaccines work in the field. Uh, the SVC research team, uh, Dr. Tim Lola, who oversees that for our group. Uh, Dr. Mike Brum, who uh, makes sure that we stay on a scientific basis and not a practitioner basis. And uh, Sherry uh, Kulagan, who is the uh, she helps handle all the data and manage the research barns, and uh, Matt Spindler, who actually is out there at the barn helping make sure everything happens on a day-to-day -day basis. <laughs>